Hey everybody, PT here and welcome to another Lenten Devo as we're getting closer and closer to Resurrection Sunday. My wife Kathy and I have three married daughters and I will say that it's been a real adventure being the parents of the bride. Fortunately for me, when it came to the wedding, Kathy and the girls did most of the work. Because we didn't know everyone that our new sons-in-law knew, there were people at the actual event, obviously, that we didn't know. And I remember looking around during the wedding receptions thinking about all the people that I'm paying for a meal for that I don't even know. Interestingly enough, some years later, I officiated a wedding and found out that the weeks following the wedding, someone actually crashed the reception. Imagine going to a private event without being invited. When the groom told me about this, I could tell that he was totally astonished that anyone would do this. So I asked him, I said, how could you tell that this person didn't belong? And he said, well, because of the way he dressed in a snowmobile suit. Simply amazing. Jesus, in his final week on earth, told this parable found in Matthew 22. He said that the kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story of a king who prepared a great wedding feast for his son. When the banquet was ready, he sent his servants to notify those who were invited, but they all refused to come. So he sent out another servant to tell them, the feast has been prepared. The bull and the fatted cattle have been killed and everything is ready. Come to the banquet. But the guests he had invited ignored them and went their own way, one to his farm, another to his business. Others seized his messengers and insulted them and killed them. The king was furious, and he set out his army to destroy the murderers and burn their town. And he said to his servants, The wedding feast is ready, and the guests I invited aren't worthy of the honor. Now go out to the street corners and invite everyone you see. So the servants brought in everyone they could find, good and bad alike. And the banquet hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to meet the guests, he noticed a man who wasn't wearing the proper clothes for a wedding. Friend, he asked, how is it that you're here without wedding clothes? But the man had no reply. Then the king said to his aides, bind his hands and feet and throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. Wow. So I wonder, how many people will there be who will show up at the wedding feast of the bridegroom, Jesus, thinking they're okay to be, at, be there, but won't be dressed appropriately? And what does it mean to have this kind of wedding attire on? Maybe we're fitted with it by how we serve others in the name of Christ, or how solid our relationship to Jesus and others is. Also, an interesting statement at the end of the parable by Jesus is, for many are called, but few are chosen. That really lines up with his talking about how wide and narrow the gates, implying that more will not enter heaven than those that will. Ouch! So, as we're in the week of Easter, I want to encourage you to take a moment. Check your wardrobe. Do you have the right attire to attend the wedding feast of the Lamb? Or do you find that you have nothing suitable to wear? If not, then why not take this moment and ask the king for some help in finding the correct attire. Ask Jesus how you can grow your relationship with him so that you can have a seat at the table. That's what I have for you today, and that means it's pastor out.